All right, so today's video is on an update on how the Blue Eddy EP800 all-in-one home solar unit here is working for me. I've now been running this for a total of three months, and it has been connected 100% of the time running this whole house that you see behind me here. And as a reminder, if you didn't see the other two videos that I did, this unit is all-in-one. So there are three batteries here, each about five kilowatt hours each, and then the inverter is on the top. The charge controllers are also embedded in this thing as well. So it is all in one. All you need to do is add solar panels to it, connect it to a panel, and you're good to go. So I mentioned this one has 15 kilowatt hours total, three batteries. You can add a fourth battery to it if you'd like. If you want more than 20 kilowatt hours of storage, then you need to add a second whole system in parallel setup right to it. So the question really is how much storage is 20 kilowatt hours? So according to most estimates, the average home in the U.S. uses between 20 and 30 kilowatt hours a day of electricity. So this maxed out at 20 kilowatts is about enough to run the average home in the U.S. for 24 hours with no solar at all, just purely off the batteries. And you can connect 9,000 watts of total solar to this unit. So it packs a pretty good punch. And with 9,000 watts of solar connected, if you're in the normal area of about four to five hours of sunlight per day here in the U.S., you're going to produce about 40 to 60 kilowatt hours per day of electricity on those sunny days. Now, that's plenty of power to run your entire home and still get a charge on this battery bank. And you can do all this with the grid still connected to it just to be your backup power if your batteries do get below 20%. That's how we use this unit on this house. And if you already have a solar system on your home, maybe it was put up by another installer. All you do is sell back to the grid. You don't have battery storage. This unit, you can get this and install it and you can install those existing solar panels you have into this unit via AC coupling or DC coupling, whichever is needed. So for those of you who already do have a system but just don't have a system that's running when the grid goes down, this is for you. Now when Bluetti first launched the EP800, they only had their Solar Plus program available in Texas, which basically is a program where they can help you find an installer, help you design the system, get solar panels, pretty much the whole package. Well, they just released that now to California, Massachusetts, and North Carolina, in addition to already having Texas. So if you're in those areas and you need this installed and want a whole design, reach out to them. I'll leave a link in the description on that. Now, as you can see, I have the EP800 installed outside under an awning on a deck here, but it is north facing, so it does not get direct sunlight or direct rain on it. If you do install this in an area that does get direct sunlight, or direct rain, they have an enclosure you can purchase. I'll link to in the description that will solve that problem. So now let's get into discussing how this unit has operated for me. And in a nutshell, it's operated perfectly. It's had no crashes, no software issues. It's worked flawlessly for the last roughly 90 days that I've had this thing plugged in. Now, a lot of people complain that solar inverters they have to run their house off grid, they'll see blinking lights if they're using cheaper LEDs. I haven't seen that at all with this unit. We use just the cheaper, LEDs, recessed cam lights so you can get at Home Depot. This operates them perfectly, no blinking, no flashing at all. Now right now we only have a 4,550 watt solar array connected to this unit. So we're off grid with this thing probably about 65, 75, 65 to 75 percent of the time. If we maxed it out and had 9,000 watts of solar on this thing, we'd be off grid probably closer to 90 percent of the time. And the reason it's not 100 percent of the time is because you have days where it's cloudy like today and you don't quite get a full charge on those batteries. So you're gonna have to have some sort of backup for us. It's the grid, the grid is the cheapest, but we also have a propane backup generator that we can connect to this thing as well, just in case. So to give you an idea as to why maxing this thing out with those 9,000 watts of solar is really critical, we have 4,550 watts of solar. So that's the max during those peak hours that the sun is out that we can produce. But if we're running our big four ton AC unit on this thing, which we do, that uses right around 3,000 to 3,500 watts. So as you can see, that takes up 85% of the available wattage that we have coming from the solar panels. So we won't get much of a charge on our battery bank if we're running that three ton or four ton AC unit the entire time on hot days. So I highly recommend if you're looking for a really off grid type solution with this thing, max it out at those 9,000 watts or as close to that number as you can get. So the surge capacity on this unit isn't quite big enough to start up our big four ton traditional AC unit. So we actually added a smooth start onto it that brought the amps down from 125, roughly 125, I believe, all the way down to about 32. So that, that does it. 
So now we can run the full four ton AC unit on this thing whenever we want. Now let's go over all the features on the app so you can see exactly how it's used. And it is very simple. Let's get into it. All right, so let's get into this app. So on the Samsung tablet here that I have it on, pretty simple, click on the Blue Eddy app. It brings up this home screen. It shows you your unit there. You can see ours is 50% charged. If I zoom in right there and you click on that anywhere on that screen. There we go. And it brings up this diagram showing you about where you're at right now. So it's later in the day at the moment and our 4,550 watts of solar panels are only bringing in 368, 367 watts right now. Batteries are at 50% charge. Home is using 963 watts. And right now that is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five refrigerator or freezers, full size, and lights, internet, nothing major, no AC running, no heat running right now. It's pretty mild temperatures outside, but that's what it looks like. You can see zero coming from the grid. You can see I'm in grid connected status, but I'm not using the grid. It just says that because we have access to the grid should we need it if the batteries get below 20%. Now let's click on the energy statistics. This is where you can see how you've performed throughout the day, year, however you want to see it. You can see how bad it's been today with solar PV generations, only 6.3 kilowatts. Uh, we've pulled 4.5 from the grid because it's been heavily overcast and misting today. Um, the load that went through the electrical panel was 11.3 kilowatt hours. Um, so pretty simple breakdown, but you can back this off and uh, see out like a month view. It'll show you the month view, the year view, which we've only had this thing for about three months, so not gonna be much data there, but you can see exactly how well you're doing. So very nice feature. So now let's get into the settings on this. So in the top right-hand corner, you can click on this exclamation point. That's if you've had any, let's see if I can get this thing to refocus. All right, there we go. If you have any errors, it's going to show up right there. It'll light up orange. As you can see, it's not. So there are no errors on this thing. And if you want to go to your settings, you hit the little gear icon there, the top right-hand corner. So I'm going to hit that. All right. You've got their user manuals here. So if you want to see any of the user manual, the main manual, the uh, quick guide, you've got the installation guide here, you've got... You've got generator installation. So it gives you a lot of different manuals here to help you if you're doing a self-install on this thing. So very nice. All right, it shows how I'm connected right now, which is via the cloud since I'm on Wi-Fi. But one of the awesome things about this unit is you can connect via Bluetooth if you're close enough to it. So in the event the internet goes down, you still have access to this unit, which is a huge benefit to this over a lot of others. I don't know why they all don't make them Bluetooth available to connect. I don't get it, but so if you're a solar manufacturer out there, take notes. You guys got to offer Bluetooth connections. All right, so the home page display, I mean, that just shows you if you wanna see your device right up front, not a big deal. If you wanna toggle that on or off, it really makes no difference. Um, the working mode is an important one. So that is self-consumption mode. That is the mode you wanna be in if you wanna be the most efficient. That means you're gonna use solar and battery as priority and only use the grid if your batteries get to a 20% state of charge. That is how we run this thing all the time because we want our electric bill to be virtually nothing. So that's how we use it. But if you wanna click on that, you'll see different settings here as well. You can click right there. And in the bottom here now it says you can go to backup mode if you'd like, or time of use. Backup mode is, it's going to be just like it says, just a backup. It's going to use the grid all the time unless the grid, the grid drops. If it senses the grid goes down, it automatically is an, it's an uninterrupted power supply. So you won't even really notice, maybe the lights would blink a hair, but often it doesn't even do that when it goes in. So within a few milliseconds, it carries your load. So you won't even notice it really. So, but I don't wanna use it like that because I wanna use this thing so it saves me on my electric bill. That's the way I wanna use it. So. We leave it in self-consumption, but there's also time of use. So if I click on time of use, it'll bring up a state of charge setting and a schedule. 
So this is where, let's say you have a time where between say 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. you've got a higher rate from your electric provider. You can set a schedule here to allow it to automatically use batteries only to run during that time. And you don't even need to have solar panels to use it like this. So if you're in a high cost electricity area that triples your rates during those hours, well, this unit, you could use it without solar panels. You can just make sure the grid charges it. And then when, whenever that time comes, 4 or 5 p.m. when the rates triple, you program it right here in the screen to go right to, that's the peak time. And it'll use the batteries only to run during that time. So, so basically you can pull from the grid when rates are cheap, store that energy in your batteries, and then release that energy during the peak times. So you're not paying that triple the cost for electricity during that time. So that's if you didn't want to use solar panels, you can use it like that. I could see a use case for that in those higher areas like California and New York. But for me, we don't use this. We don't have higher rates at certain times and we just want to be off grid as long as possible. So we use the self-consumption mode. All right, system switch. That is if you want to turn the system off. So I don't want to turn the system off. We leave it running continuously all the time. So that just always stays on. You've got a buzzer switch. So if there was an alarm and it was beeping at you, you can turn that switch off so it doesn't keep beeping at you, um, which some inverters don't allow you to do that. That's a great feature because if you've ever had an inverter scream at you, it gets annoying after a while trying to figure out what's wrong. You also can click on the version here and see exactly which software version you're running and if you need to do an update. You can do it right here and just click on to update it. Simple as that. All right, advanced settings. So in advanced settings, you can tell it if you want it to charge from the grid or not charge from the grid at all. You can also program it to the max amount you want it to send when it charges from the grid. You could change the working mode again from this position. And if you change it from this area in advanced, you actually have a new mode. So I'll show you. Now all of a sudden you've got custom mode, which you didn't have in the last menu. Custom is basically a combination of time of use, of self-consumption. So you can adjust your battery settings when you want the grid to turn on. I never use this function, but I could see somebody having some use out of it. So there's the system recovery switch, which I've never used. But if you click on this little question mark here, it'll tell you exactly what that's for. I'm not hitting it just right. There we go. So if you want the system to start up with the same settings as before it was turned off, please enable this feature. So it's up to you if you want to do that or not. Grid self-adaptation. That is an interesting um, feature they have on this thing. So basically the system can charge normally, even when the voltage on the electrical grid is unstable, having voltage spikes, drops, or other instabilities. So very interesting feature. So if you're in an area, maybe third world country, where the grid is all over the place, that is a great feature. Not really that needed here in the U.S., but <laughs> who knows what the state of our grid is right now and how it will be in the future as more and more electric cars get on it and more and more homes go all electric. So you never know. You've got a battery maintenance feature here, and it'll basically tell you if you need maintenance. Ours says no battery maintenance is required currently. And as I understand this, basically, if you don't discharge your batteries at all, if you just leave it in backup mode, you're going to want to discharge it sometimes so it can run kind of a, a test and see how it is with stability and its lifespan. And it'll tell you, it's going to spit out here what it finds. So if you're running it like I do in self-consumption, it's just always going to say no maintenance is required because they're being used. You've got an enable generator feature here. That's if you want to connect a generator. I don't. You've got authentication information. And that just gives you some information on what's happening with the grid level, your high voltage settings, under frequency settings. Really, you never touch this stuff. This all comes pre-programmed. I wouldn't mess with it at all. You've got this battery heating function as well. So if you're in an area that's very cold, this can help, but it will use um, energy to do that. So we've never used it. We do have the unit outside, but technically when the batteries get below 32 degrees, it's not going to be efficient. It won't charge as well. So that could be a function if you're in a colder area that you should look into. So that's it for advanced settings here. 
Um, and then there's about the device, which really is just information on the unit you're using. So um, serial number, things like that. So not really anything you need to look at. So that is all the functions on the app. As you can see, it's very simple to use. And they've done a very good job making that for just a normal person who's not an electrical engineer being able to monitor this thing, adjust the settings as needed. So nice job on that Blue Eddy. Now I'll leave a link in the description of this video to where you can purchase the EP800. And you can also use my discount code TexanEP800 and you'll get over $500 off on it as well. I also have a wiring diagram that I put together that has all the parts, the pieces we use for the install that you can download for free. If you go to ep800download.com, you can download that for free. And by downloading that, you'll also be added to my email list. I send out critical updates on this unit, and you can also respond to that and ask me any questions. Disclaimer, I might not be able to get to all of you. I do get a lot of emails and questions, so I'll do the best I can to get back to you within a reasonable amount of time. Also in that PDF download, I have some other critical pieces of information like how many watts the average appliance uses so you can see exactly what you can run, what you can't run at night. It's been very helpful for a lot of my viewers who have seen that, so make sure you download that. So my goal with this channel is to help you all become less reliant on the electrical grid or completely not reliant on it at all. And also being able to do that without sacrificing the standard of living that we've all been accustomed to. I give props to the people who can live out in the middle of nowhere in a small cabin using a wood-burning stove, but I want all the traditional appliances that we're used to having. So if that's something you'd like to pursue, make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, it really helps. All right, everyone, see you in the next video.